the Elgato Stream Deck. It's a must-have for live streamers, but can it improve workflows for digital artists and other types of content creators? I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing the Elgato Stream Deck from an artist's perspective. That's coming up next. Quick disclaimer, this is not a sponsored video. I bought the Elgato Stream Deck with my own money. As always, all opinions in this review are my own. I'm using the 15 key version of the Stream Deck, but there is also a smaller version with six keys and a super gigantic version with 32 keys. The Stream Deck is a USB powered control pad with an array of buttons you can program to execute a variety of commands. You can launch applications, folders, and files, play media, invoke keyboard shortcuts, open websites, adjust settings, and much more. It has a touch sensitive LED screen that allows you to customize each button with an icon, which makes it really easy and intuitive to find commands. So what can you do with it? While it's mostly geared toward live streamers, the Stream Deck can also benefit digital artists, graphic designers, video editors, audio producers, animators, and just about anyone who spends a lot of time working on a computer. This is because the ultra customizable buttons can be set up to streamline specific workflows, saving you time by replacing a complex series of mouse clicks keyboard input, and commands with just a few buttons. For example, you could create shortcut buttons for all of the commonly used tools and commands in your digital art application. Instead of having to press Ctrl T on your keyboard or look for free transform from the edit menu, you could make a free transform button on your Stream Deck, and you could have it only pop up when your art application is active on screen. If you were to switch to a different application, such as a web browser, you could have a button open Instagram, and after uploading your artwork, another button could automatically paste predefined hashtags to your post. But you are not limited to single actions. Each button can also trigger a series of actions, so you can launch them all simultaneously. For example, you could open multiple websites at once, or you can trigger a sequence of settings in an application. Now let's move on to discuss the performance of the Stream Deck. Let's start with the feel of the buttons. The buttons feel nice. They're made of a glossy plastic with a slight grip that is not unlike a smartphone screen. The buttons have a slight concavity to them and are not too big or too small even for my large hands. The buttons wobble a tiny bit and rock around a lot when pressed down. I don't think it really affects the performance of the device, but it does feel a little clunky. The center button has a horizontal protrusion on it so you can feel where the center of the keypad is. Moving on to the quality of the screen. The screen is very colorful and adequately bright, and it can be dimmed to your liking. The transparent keys do distort the image of the icons near the edge of the buttons, which can slightly obscure the labels on the buttons. It's especially noticeable on text that is aligned on the bottom of the icon. Fortunately, you can change the position of the text and the font properties to compensate for this. I haven't taken the Stream Deck apart, but I imagine there's probably a single screen with a touch sensor underneath touch capacitive keys. Moving on to the stand. I can't say I'm a fan of the stand. It's way more difficult than it needs to be to change positions with these little legs that flop around everywhere. The stand is made of cheap, albeit light plastic, but it does the trick. The quality of the stand feels a little out of place since the device is not exactly cheap. Fortunately, once you've got the Stream Deck in a position you like, you probably aren't going to need to mess with the stand. The bottom of the stand has a rubbery grip, so it won't slide around when you press on it. It feels pretty stable when I press the buttons. Next, we'll discuss the USB connection. The Stream Deck uses a USB 2.0 connection with a 59 inch cable. The cable is not removable, which means if it were damaged, you'd need to replace the entire device. The cable could be longer. I happen to be plugging mine into my Cintiq, but I would need an extension cable if I had to connect it to the back of my computer. Now let's talk about the form of the device. The Stream Deck's dimensions are 4.6 by 3.3 by 0.8 inches. That's about the size and dimensions of a thick wallet. While on the stand at a slight incline, it's just barely able to slide under my desk on the keyboard tray. Now let's talk about desk space requirements. The Stream Deck takes up about as much space as a mouse or a smartphone. It's a bit bulkier than those examples, but it gives you an idea of what kind of surface area you need to accommodate for. As far as customizing the buttons, you can create your own icons in your image editor of choice, but there is also a library of free icons to use. For some reason, this library is hosted on a separate website, which adds a few extra steps to choose your icon, export it, and then import it onto the device. 
I wish the pre-made icons and icon editor were embedded inside of the Stream Deck control panel. You can also easily add text labels to buttons and change the font properties dynamically. If you select an app on your computer, it may even also auto-select the app's icon for the button. And of course, you can change this if you like. I haven't found myself needing to create too many custom icons because the free icons seem to do the trick. The Stream Deck control panel features a simple drag and drop function to move buttons around. However, the simplified interface means that it can feel tedious to set up a lot of buttons. Custom button templates would be a welcome addition, but copying and pasting buttons seems to work well enough to create multiple buttons with similar properties. So which size of the Stream Deck is best? Before having actually tried the Stream Deck, I was convinced that the six key model was too small and the extra large was probably overkill. So I wanted the 15 key model. However, the mid-size Stream Deck was sold out on Amazon and in the two local stores I looked at. With some persistence, I was finally able to order one online. I have to say, I think I made the right choice. After programming some of the keys and setting up some workflows, six keys would have definitely been too few. Shoot, 15 might even be too few depending on what your needs are. I did find myself having to get creative with how I programmed the keys as I quickly filled the screen with commands. 32 keys definitely would have come in handy, but the device would have been too wide for my desk and it was substantially more expensive. So what I did is I made multiple pages of commands, folders with additional commands inside, and even some multi-action switches to maximize my button usage. Next, let's talk about exporting layouts. It's really easy to export your Stream Deck layouts as a file and then restore them at any time. Although this is a small feature, it's very important to me since I invested a lot of time into setting up all of my workflows. Now let's talk about some comparisons to other shortcut devices. The three shortcut devices that I have the most experience with are the Wacom Express Key Remote, the Clip Studio Tabmate, and the Trusty Keyboard. In comparison to the Wacom Express Key Remote, while the Express Key Remote has a smaller profile and docks nicely on the larger Cintiqs, unless you own a Cintiq and only require basic shortcut key functionality, I think the Stream Deck blows away the Express Key Remote. It's just so much nicer to see colorful buttons, and the icons on the buttons make it easier to find commands at a glance. It requires far more memorization to recall what the buttons do on the Express Key Remote, and it only gets more complicated with each profile you create. Try as I may, I just can't seem to use the Express Key Remote more than just here and there. Now let's compare the Stream Deck to the Tabmate. While the Tabmate fits nicely in your hand, and it's easy to memorize the location of commands, the Tabmate cannot be docked and it does not lie flat on a desk. You have to hold it the entire time you're working. The Stream Deck has an adjustable stand that holds the device upright. I much prefer having a free hand, so being able to use the device without holding it at all times is a must. As with the Express Key Remote, the Stream Deck also beats the Tabmate in terms of ease of use because you can see the icons on the buttons. I'd say for the most part, you can use all three of these devices without looking at them, just by feeling the keys. I would say the Stream Deck is the most difficult to control without looking since there are three rows of five identical buttons. While there is a small protrusion on the center button, it's not as intuitive as the unique layouts and key shapes of the Tabmate and Express Key Remote. As far as the control panels on each device, the Tabmate comes in last place because you can only use it natively for Clip Studio Paint unless you use a third-party app to program the keys. Wacom's control panel is decent and allows for a lot of customization. You can even have the Wacom Express Key Remote automatically choose a different profile depending on which app is active on screen. If you have a million dollars, you can also buy a bunch of Wacom Express Key Remotes and use one for each individual application. But the Stream Deck has them all beat because it has a control panel that lets you choose from a much wider range of commands and third-party integrations. It's super easy to create profiles for individual apps and have them come up automatically and it's far easier to drag and drop or copy and paste actions onto buttons with the Stream Deck software than it is with Wacom's control panel. I found myself setting up the Express Key Remote more than I'd like to admit. In terms of connectivity, the Stream Deck requires a USB cable, while the Tabmate and Express Key Remote use a wireless connection. The Tabmate connects via Bluetooth, the Express Key Remote uses a wireless USB receiver. There are advantages and disadvantages to both connection types, so this may be something to consider. Now let's talk about how I use the Stream Deck. I bought the Stream Deck to enhance my live streaming experience, but I quickly found myself using it more for other tasks. Here are some examples of the various layouts I use. 
I've created a next page button on each page, and each page is a different profile. Some profiles will be activated based on the application I have active on screen, but I can also freely cycle through the pages. First, we'll start with the home page. This page comes up first by default, and it has shortcuts to some of my most frequently used applications like Corel Painter, Photoshop, and XSplit. I also have buttons that open my email and work schedule in a web browser. Next to that is a button that opens my work in progress folder on my computer, and beside that is a folder that contains websites I commonly access. I can exit out of that folder and return to the home page. On the bottom row, I have a third party action that toggles my audio inputs and outputs between different combinations of devices. For example, I can toggle between recording with my condenser microphone and playback on my speakers to recording and playback on my headset. Next to that, I have a music button that launches Google Play Music because I like to listen to music while I work. And there's a button for notes, which opens up a folder that contains Mind Manager, Evernote, and Google Docs. The second to last button opens up the Wacom Tablet control panel, and the final button opens the Stream Deck control panel. So as you can see, this covers a lot of the repetitive tasks that I perform on a daily basis. It's hard to say exactly how much time this is saving me, but being able to access all this stuff with an easy to find button definitely feels faster than hunting for it with a mouse. As I mentioned earlier, in the top right of every page is a button to cycle to the next page. So on the second page, I have a profile for Premiere Pro, which is the program I use to edit videos. Prior to the Stream Deck, I was mostly doing a lot of these commands with keyboard shortcuts, or the Express keys if I happen to be editing on the Mobile Studio Pro. But I'm quite pleased with how well the Stream Deck works in Premiere Pro. By executing a lot of commonly used commands with the push of a button, my video editing process feels a bit faster. If I find myself hunting for a command in Premiere Pro, I add it as a button on the Stream Deck, and problem solved. When a video is complete, I can render it with a button, Next, I can hit the thumbnail button and open up a Photoshop thumbnail template file. And of course, when Photoshop opens, I can have the button layout change to an array of Photoshop specific commands. If we move on to the next page, I have a setup for XSplit, which I use for recording art videos and live streaming. This profile is mostly for live streaming, but it also has some recording commands. I can toggle between the different scenes during my live stream with the first few buttons. I also have buttons that can control my microphone and system sound. I have a folder of timers for art challenges. On the bottom row is a folder with a collection of voice mod commands. Then beside that, there is a folder with some setup commands like websites and apps I'll need to launch prior to live streaming. Plus I have web browser links that open Twitter, YouTube, and Patreon so I can announce my stream. The Twitter post can even be posted automatically with the press of a button if you link Twitter with the Stream Deck. In addition to Twitter, there are also lots of other third-party integrations you can take advantage of. Moving on to the next page of commands, I have a profile for Corel Painter that is set up for recording my painting process in XSplit. I can start and stop a recording, change my scene to show different cameras and points of view, and pop open a folder to preview my recording. The next page has some automated text, common hashtags, and emojis. This is all stuff I would normally have to hunt for in various places, but it's now all conveniently located in one place. The final page on my Stream Deck is just a blank page that I can select if I want to temporarily clear the screen if it's distracting me. I can also set the Stream Deck to turn off after a certain amount of inactivity. That's great, but do I actually use it? Unlike the Wacom Express Key Remote, I feel compelled to use the Stream Deck. I think it's a combination of the graphical buttons which can clearly identify a command at a glance, and the complexity of the commands that can be achieved with the Stream Deck. It really feels like a practical way to invoke commands. Now, of course, there are some commands that are going to be easier to do on the Wacom Express Key Remote, such as zooming in and out of your page with the touch wheel. But in my case, I can use the touch on my Cintiq to rotate, zoom, and pan. So it felt fine to have everything else I might do while painting in button form. But perhaps the most compelling feature is the color screen, which begs you to touch it. It's always glaring at you, seeking your attention, as screens often do. That's why the Stream Deck works, because it makes you want to touch the buttons. I don't get that same feeling from the bland gray buttons on the Express Key Remote, TabMate, or my keyboard. The Stream Deck inspires me. It reminds me of what I can do. The Express Key Remote, TabMate, and Keyboard all expect me to memorize their cold, emotionless buttons. 
there's definitely a palatable aesthetic to be appreciated while working with the Stream Deck. And now for my conclusion. Dare I say the Stream Deck has revolutionized how I work on a computer? Okay, I dare. As a multitasker who dabbles in a lot of different software, I feel so much more coordinated now because not only are the most common commands available at the press of a key, but my workflows are also laid out visually, so I never have to worry about forgetting a command or an element of my process. I haven't quantified how much time I've saved from using the Stream Deck, but I'm certain it adds up to substantial savings in the long run. The bottom line is that it's easier to find what I'm looking for, and that feels good. I barely mentioned the benefits for live streaming, but let me say I don't know how I ever live streamed without the Stream Deck. It's allowed me to do so much more during my live streams. If you happen to be both a live streamer and an artist, then you absolutely have to get the Stream Deck. It's worth the investment to improve your everyday workflow and your live streaming experience. I put it off for a long time, and now that I have one, I have to admit that I was totally wrong about how useful it is for me. But that's just me. In addition to creating art, I also do video editing. I promote my business and do lots of other repetitive tasks with a lot of steps. I enjoy finding ways to save time and work more efficiently. That may not be you. Honestly, if I were only getting the Stream Deck solely for digital illustration, I don't know if I'd be able to justify the purchase when I already have a keyboard that can do much of what I need. A digital artist who works mostly in one app probably isn't going to need multi-action commands and third-party integrations. That's not to say there isn't a benefit to visual icons that are more intuitive than complex keyboard shortcuts, because there is. But I wouldn't say the Stream Deck is essential for digital art. It's definitely a luxury that could save you time, and depending on your needs as an artist, it might be worth it. If you're making art, but also posting your art online, live streaming your art, creating promotional assets for your art, promoting your business, and just overall trying to be better organized, then the Stream Deck could be useful to you. If you enjoyed this review of the Stream Deck, check out some of my other reviews of digital art gadgets. I'll link you to that in a playlist. And if you're interested in bonus review content, become a member of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.